I am afraid I'm gonna have to stop stacking my favorite silver. And that's the American Silver Eagle. Why am I done with Silver Eagles for 2021? It's been one of my favorite things to stack. Well, in this video, I'll explain to you why, and I'll explain it in front of my local coin shop dealer, Tim Marshner. And I also have a really interesting personal conversation with Tim at the very end about a really cool trip he took and one that I hopefully will take with Mrs. Yankee. If you're interested in, in hearing a little bit more of Tim on a, a personal level, check out that segment at the very end, after the, the credits roll, after you hear the fife and drum again. <laughs> And don't forget, this is a perfect time to hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And even share this video with someone. Okay, without further ado, why I'm done with Silver Eagles for 2021. Hey, Tim. <laughs> you got a couple. I think, are you first timers into? We, we are, in fact, yep. Yeah. Um, we are. And it. It's so interesting because I feel like I've known you through through Yankee's uh, YouTube channel. I actually called you a couple of weeks ago um, and asked you about a 2020 Silver Eagle for my granddaughter. How you doing? Not bad. Awesome. I'm afraid I'm going to have to stop stacking my favorite silver. And that's the American Silver Eagle. Hmm. At least for 2021. Is and that because they redesigned it and you don't like the new design? No! Well, they don't really like the new design. But no, actually, I think it's because I, I believe they're becoming more of a, a numismatic or semi-numismatic collectible silver. And, you know, back in the day when I was looking for cull and circulated American silver eagles, yeah. went through the books... Yeah. Um, do, by the way, do you get any demand for call or circulated? Do people ask you for those? Not really. Okay. No, and I do get them in every now and then. I'm not really sure where I put them, but, um, you know, somebody who has one that's been sitting in a drawer or sitting in somebody's pocket, they're not as good as a round once they get dinged up. And that's why... I was stacking them. I got tubes of them from you. I built my monster box. You got a whole bunch of ratty ones. I got a whole bunch of ratty ones, right, thanks to you, at a really, really good price yeah. back then. Well, I, I was pretty much giving away the colorized ones. Oh, those are fun to clean up, yes. But, you know, I just have a hard time spending the premiums. Like... Do you have any type ones? Because I have five more that I need to, to buy. To I ran out of to. type ones. I should have picked them up this morning, but I, I, I sold them late last night. So mm. it didn't even cross my mind I, that I wouldn't have any. And they, the price has not dropped at all on the type ones. And the inventory that even my wholesaler has is pretty meager. And I think that's going to be the case from now on. So you think they may run out? I wouldn't be at all surprised. Wouldn't that jack but the price be, up? But there'd be some distributor who's probably got a you know vault full of them somewhere, waiting for right. the price to go up. It was only made for four months. You know the the type two, according to their schedule, is going to be made for nine months. There you go. See, that's not me as a stacker. I'm trying to get um, as much as I can for my money, while at the same time focusing somewhat on government minted silver bullion because I like that recognizability, that resaleability, the you know familiarity with with what that is. I just think I'm gonna take a pause with the American Silver well, if you Eagle. you decide to bug out and you take all your Silver Eagles, the government will probably take them away from you. Oh. But if you have some Maple Leafs, they'll probably let you into Canada. <laughs> well, it's funny you should say Maple Leafs because that actually, this, I saw this on your counter. This is where I'm focusing. I'm trying to get a monster box eventually of these. And I know you have some of these, right? Yes. So I do want to get those. What dates? Uh, 21s. Okay, so 20. Okay, so what is the price right now of a Canadian maple leaf? Uh, it's come down dramatically. It was um, when we started with the 2021s. Of course, the silver was a much higher price. Mm -hmm. They started out at 38, then they went to 37, then 35, I think it was. Um, and let's see. 
I guess the last price we had them at, I still have some of those left, was 32, and now they're 31. Oh my goodness. American Silver Eagles, 2021s? Um, well, they come down too. They're um, probably 33.50 right now. And you have 2021 Type 2s? I do. And I only have a handful of those. Again, not because I think they're really ugly. <laughs> It'll grow on me, Tim, I'm sure. Over the years when I'm really old, Yankee, and I look back, I might actually like the reverse. When you're that old, you'll probably look at them and say, why did they put a seagull on the <laughs> It is a seagull, right? <laughs> no, 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 it's an eagle. It's, you, don't, you don't see the head feathers. And when the eagle uh, puts his head down, those feathers stand up on the back of his neck. And in this design, his head is down and I the know. feathers are down as well. I think I that's see. a mistake. This... I, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, I've seen eagles in zoos and everything. And we, we used to go to a place in Florida where they had bald eagles. And when they put their head down, these, these feathers in the back, especially the white feathers, kind of stand out a little bit. You know, they, if he had his mm. head at that angle, they would be more horizontal than that. But they, they have not the feathers are actually hugging the head and that's not the way the eagle appears. I'm not the designer and the designer went a long way trying to get the right focal length uh, so that the right wing looks like it's in the distance. Yes. And um, so it's a little, it's a little softer. Mm -hmm. It doesn't show as much detail, but I think the perspective is right. At that angle, you don't really see that the the uh, of the right wing that the top part of the wing is, is flat, which it would be if the eagle is about to land. So you're saying it's not clipped off from the the design; no. it's folded down. No, no, the top of the wing, yeah, just like the the yep. uh, left wing. Right. It's folded. That's okay. that's how they, you know, they slow themselves down as they're landing. They never explain what they consider to be the anti counterfeiting measures, except um, for the missing reed, which to me is like, yeah, that is kind of weird. <laughs> That's impossible to counterfeit, right, Tim? What? The missing, <laughs> the missing read, right? <laughs> well, you say after you make the coin, you take a file and you just, you know, oh. a, a nail file. <laughs> I mean, if that's an anti-counterfeiting measure, that's uh, pretty basic. Yeah. It would be nice to have one tube of the Type 2s, just as more like a collector, collector item. It's I would something. Agree. That's it. I don't want to be stacking this it, stuff. It, the design is kind of growing on me. Okay. Uh, so do you have what? Do you have a you have a tube of twenty twenty ones? I do. And they're sealed, and I think that's the you, that's, is that new, unique now. With uh, uh, it's something they started probably to distinguish between the type one and the type two. Ah. Um, I've never seen some, that before from the U.S. Mint, but okay. it's um, it's a it's a good idea because it doesn't okay. take a whole lot of. That'll be it. I already, I have a few, but I'll just get a nice tube. I'll leave it sealed. And that might be it, folks, for Yankee stacking American Silver Eagles, at least for a while. I'm going to be focusing on that. Is this me, please. 2021 in me? Yep. That's what I want. That's what I'm going to be focusing on, guys. And I'll take a little pause on that. I'm sure others will pick up where I leave off. But uh, thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. Anytime. That is nice. America, the beautiful five ounce. Man. Roosevelt was instrumental in um, the National Park Program. Yes. Credited with starting the program. That's true. He wanted to preserve a lot of lands. And of course, he went to places like Yellowstone and Yosemite and realized that this country has some really fantastic places to to visit. Yosemite is the first, I think, national park. It's a place that I desperately want to go oh, to. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I was on my way there with my family back in uh, 1961. My father was, uh, he had retired. He got his doctorate and wanted, he was taking a job. He was going to take a job in a college teaching because he always wanted to teach. So he had interviews scheduled all over the country. And um, he called to, I guess it was Cal Western University, um, Point Loma in San Diego. And they had moved up his appointment. 
Hmm. So we skipped Yosemite. That was the day we were supposed to go to Yosemite. Drove all the way down to San Diego. And um, I told my kids, you know, I've been up and down Mount Washington many times, but I really want to see Yosemite. And then my daughter had an internship in 2007 in San Francisco. And she asked me to come out and let's just do some of the things you want to do. So we went to the wine country and everything. And Yosemite was the crown jewel of that trip. The amazing thing about Yosemite is you're there at a, a, an outlet called Glacier Point, I think it is. And you're looking at uh, Half Dome, mm -hmm. which is an incredible. I mean, I always wondered what happened to the other half. But <laughs> you're, you're at the same altitude as the top of Mount Washington at that outlook. And it was 75 degrees when we were there. And um, the fellow next to me was from Europe and he traveled through the Alps. I, I said, well, you probably see things like this all the time. He goes, no, this is unique. He said, I've never seen anything like this in Europe. And, you know, as we're there, there were lots of climbers going up El Capitan and um, they got to talk to some of the climbers and they were, you know, they're picking their roots out. And, you know, it's like, geez, how do these guys do this, you know? Even hiking a small section of the John Mears Trail, that's what I really want to do. Yeah, and the, you know, the, what's amazing about those trails, uh, the, the waterfalls are unique. And um, you can even, we went up Half Dome, but I said, I'm gonna go up until I feel nervous. And they have this the two chains, uh, you know, like, a, like a railing, and they're poked into the, the uh, rock. And you're, it, you're getting steeper and steeper. And then, <laughs> This guy in front of me dropped something and it almost took me out, not realizing how you could lose your footing very easily. And um, so he was, he was kind of around my legs and I'm trying to stay, I don't want to let go of these chains, okay? And after that, I said to my daughter, I said, you can go on, I'm going back. <laughs> And, oh. I, and I turned around to go back, and I wasn't the only one going back. I bet. It is really, it's scary yeah. up there. Well, we almost got to the top, but I just, you know, that's not Well, I don't know if I'll get to the top either, but uh, I'm definitely hoping definitely to take make Mrs. Yeah. Yankee and I have some unfinished business in, out, out there to, to take care of. Oh, that's great. This whole National Park series is very interesting because there's so many great national parks to visit.